Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Welcome to another episode of The Power of Dhikr. We're talking about the virtues of dhikr, the importance of dhikr, how to perform uh, dhikr properly, how to remember Allah, how to become from those people who the Prophet wasallam said about them, sabaq, sabaq al-mufarridun. Those people who are al-mufarridun, they have gone beyond, they've got a precedence, they've beaten other people, they're ahead of others in the sight of Allah. Who are those mufarridun or messenger of Allah? They are those who remember Allah much from the men and from the women. In another hadith that we're going to look at that tells us the virtue and the importance of remembering Allah, we have the hadith that is narrated in Sahih al-Bukhari. From the narration of Abu Musa al-Ash'ari, uh, an, from the Prophet wasallam that he said, the example of the one who remembers his Lord and the one who does not remember his Lord is the example of the living and the dead. This is a very significant hadith for us in the importance of remembering Allah. The example of the one who remembers his Lord and the one who does not remember his Lord is like the example of the living and the dead. Are the living and the dead the same? Are the living and the dead the same in their chance to reach a higher level with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? No, the dead, their deeds are finished. They're dead. They've, they, it's over for them. Except for those few deeds that remain, there's, there's nothing for them. But look at the example. The one who remembers their Lord is like the one who is alive. And the one who doesn't remember Allah is like the one who is dead. Regardless of whether they attribute themselves to Islam or not, we need to be focused, all of us, upon increasing our remembrance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And this really is absolutely critical. Ibn Qayyim, rahimahullah, mentions over 70 benefits in the remembrance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. In fact, he begins by saying that there are more than a hundred which can be mentioned and then he goes on to mention about 70 benefits in one of his books about the remembrance of Allah. Reasons why we should be remembering Allah, why we need to be remembering Allah. And we're just going to give you one reason to begin with, one single reason, one single benefit to the remembrance of Allah Azza wa Jal. And that benefit is that the remembrance of Allah pushes away the shaitan and takes the role of the shaitan out of our lives and makes the shaitan have less influence upon us. We know that the shaitan is trying constantly to misguide us. We know that the shaitan has promised Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that he will stand on the straight path. I will stand on your straight path. And then I will come to them from every direction. Allah mentioned He will come from the front, He will come from the right, from the left, He will come from every single direction. Trying to misguide the people away from the path of Allah. But there is a way for us to simply destroy the efforts of the shaitan. To destroy the plots of the shaitan and to push the shaitan out of our lives completely. Or to the point where his influence is so reduced that we don't see his influence upon our lives, we don't see his influence upon ourselves. Of course, no Muslim achieves this 100%. None of us achieve this 100%, because our own soul is enough of a thing to fight against without even the influence of the shaitan. But there is a way for us to push away the shaitan. And Allah Azza wa Jal explains this to us in the Quran, and the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam explains this to us in the Sunnah. That there is a way to push away the shaitan, to break the shaitan, to leave the shaitan feeling isolated, broken, and giving up on being able to misguide you away from the path of Allah. And that is zikrullah, the remembrance of Allah that we are talking about in these episodes. So Allah Azza wa Jal says, وَمَن يَعِشْ Whoever 
He يَعِشُ عَنْ ذِكْرِ الرَّحْمَانِ He does not remember Allah. He turns away from remembering Allah. What does Allah Azza wa Jal say about him? نُقَيِّضْ لَهُ شَيْطَانًا فَهُوَ لَهُ قَرِينٌ We will set for him or make for him or designate for him a shaitan who will accompany him. So a shaitan that will accompany you to take you away from the path of Allah because of what? Because you turn away from the remembrance of Allah. And if we take this in reverse order, what we call uh, uh, sort of uh, the implication or the implied understanding of the ayah, the implied understanding of the ayah is that if we remember Allah, then this shaitan will not have the influence over us. He will not be designated to misguide us. And Allah Azza wa Jal also mentions this understanding in another ayah. Allah Azza wa Jal says, إِنَّ الَّذِينَ اتَّقَوْا إِذَا مَسَّهُمْ طَائِفٌ مِّنَ الشَّيْطَانِ تَذَكَّرُوا فَإِذَا هُمْ مُبْصِرُونَ Allah Azza wa Jal says, Indeed those who fear Allah, those people who are the people of taqwa, the people of piety, of fearing Allah, when they are touched by something from the shaitan, they're afflicted by something from the shaitan, something comes in from the shaitan and just you know, gets into them. What do they do? Tadakkaru. What's the signal that they are from the people of taqwa? What's the signal that they are from those people who are close to Allah? They do the dhikr of Allah, they remember. They remember Allah, فَإِذَا هُمْ مُبْسِرُونَ And then at this point when they remember Allah, they can see everything clearly. They can understand everything in its right way and they are no longer afflicted by this confusion and this touch of the shaitan. When the shaitan comes and, and sort of confuses them and whispers to them and makes them turn away from the path of Allah, as soon as they feel this whisper of the shaitan, تَذَكَّرُوا They remember Allah, فَإِذَا هُمْ مُبْسِرُونَ And then everything becomes clear to them and they are uh, become upright on the path of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. There is a hadith of the Messenger of Allah, and this is the hadith of Al Harith Al Ash'ari radiallahu an from the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam that he said. And this is a long hadith. It is the hadith of Yahya ibn Zakariya and Isa. So the Prophet Yahya and the Prophet Isa, may the peace and blessings of Allah be upon them and upon our Messenger Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam. And in this hadith, Yahya is commanded to tell the people five things, five kalimat, five words or five phrases or five things. And they are commanded to act upon them. And he is commanded to tell the children of Israel these five things and that they must act according to them. So the Prophet Yahya has to learn them and he has to act upon them. And likewise, he has to teach them to the children of Israel, and the children of Israel also have to act upon them. And this, uh, he, he begins to do this, and he has a conversation with Isa alayhi salam, and Isa uh, asks if he should command this to the children of Israel, or if Yahya should. And of course, Yahya, he says that, uh, I am frightened that Allah's punishment will come upon me if I do not, or if you precede me in this, because this is what I have been commanded to do. So he begins by telling them these five things. And the last of the things that he tells them, and that I command them to remember Allah. I command them to do the dhikr of Allah. Because the example of the one who remembers Allah is like the example of a man. The example of a man whose enemy comes uh, following him. You know, his enemy rushes after him, is chasing him. So we have a man and we have his enemy that is chasing him. And this is the teaching of Yahya to the children of Israel. So we have a man and his enemies are following him, chasing him, trying to kill him. And then he comes to a fortress, a fully guarded fortress. He comes to a fortress that is that is a stronghold, and then he is able to protect himself from them. This is the example of the slave who cannot protect himself from the shaitan except with the remembrance of Allah the Exalted. This is a hugely important hadith. Now, this hadith is an authentic hadith. It's a hadith that is uh, within the, the limits of authenticity. And if you imagine, 
that there are five things that Yahya is commanded to tell the children of Israel and they're commanded to do it and he's commanded to do it. And he's frightened that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will punish him if he doesn't uh, deliver the message. And at the end he gives the message of the remembrance of Allah. He says the fifth thing is that I command them to remember Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and he gives an example. You imagine a man who is running away from his enemy. Hundreds of enemies around him with swords or guns or arrows or whatever it is. And they are chasing him down the path. He has no chance to escape. Imagine, at the end, his enemies are going to catch him and there's so many of them, he's going to die. But he comes across a fortress. So while he's running away, and you imagine, he's running, his enemies are just behind him, they're about to strike him and he gets into a fortress, he locks the door and this fortress is so secure that his enemies are unable to enter in, they're unable to get to him. And the example of this is the example of the slave who remembers Allah. The shayateen are everywhere. The shaytan is trying to chase him, trying to misguide him, trying to take him away from the path of Allah. Everywhere he looks, he turns left, he turns right, he finds a shaytan that is trying to take him away from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That is trying to misguide him, that is trying to make you, at the end of the day, what the shaytan wants from you is for you to enter the hellfire with him. Because he knows where he's going. He knows that he is going to enter into the hellfire. He knows that he is finished. He is, has no hope of the mercy of Allah and he wants to make you like him. It's just spite. He wants as many of you to come with him as possible. And so he chases you from every direction. But there is a fortress that you can lock yourself in that he can't get to you. No matter what he tries to throw at you, no matter what he tries to do to misguide you or to take you away from the path of Allah, the shaitan is unable to do it. Just can't do it. He's unsuccessful. And he's unsuccessful because of this fortress. And what is this fortress? As Yahya, uh, may the peace and blessings of Allah be upon him and upon our messenger Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa said in this authentic hadith, that it is the remembrance of Allah. When you remember Allah, you build a fortress around yourself. And every single person, they want to live in security. Look at your homes today. You have burglar alarms, you have, uh, you know, you have security cameras, you have CCTV, you know, it, maybe at your workplace you have guards at the gate, and you do everything you can to protect yourself. When you drive through a bad area in the car, you lock the doors, you make sure the alarm is always on. You're very, very, very cautious about protecting yourself from your enemies. But the shaitan is a greater enemy to you and a more significant enemy to you than anyone who wants to rob you of your wealth or rob you of your money or rob you of your health or beat you or do whatever to you. Because at the end of the day, these things that happen, they are the worldly things, your health, your wealth, you know, your, your, your security. But imagine that the shaitan wants to take your religion away and he wants to take your akhirah away. He wants to take the heaven away from you that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has promised the believers. He wants to take paradise away from you and you have a means to protect yourself. An alarm, a locked house with an alarm system and CCTV and he can't get in. And so that's what we have uh, time for today inshaAllah on the power of dhikr. Please do join us uh, for a future episode of the power of dhikr inshaAllah ta'ala. Until then, I leave you in the care of Allah. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Don't leave me drowning here, alone and astray. Don't leave me drowning here, alone and astray.